Welcome everyone to the June 5th, 2023 Board of Education regular business meeting. I have a motion to open the meeting. From Tom and a second from Bill. All in favor? That is everyone. Please rise for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. To remind everyone, we have emergency exits in the back and on the side of the building. In case of an emergency, please quickly and safely make your way to one of those exits and follow the instructions. A second reminder that this, like all our buildings, is a smoke-free campus. It is upon recommendation from the Superintendent of Schools that the Board of Education approve minutes from the meeting of the Huntington Union Free School District Board of Education dated May 8th, 2023. A motion from Bill and a second from Michelle. All in favor? That's everyone. Thank you. We have several FYIs, budget appropriation reports for general school lunch and special aid funds as of 5-31-2023, budget transfers, um, change order for Finley, claims audit report for April 2023, revenue status report for May 31st, 2023. Does anyone have any questions or comments on any of those? Oh, you still can't get on? You want me to move my computer over so you can walk on? Okay. Um, okay, I'm sorry. Did anyone have anything? Did you have anything on any of this? Zach or Ike? No, the only thing I'll, <coughs> I'll mention is just the volume of budget transfers at this time of year is okay. not un uncommon, primarily because of uh, closing out encumbered uh, purchase order encumbrances. And uh, sometimes, for example, health insurance, uh, we're actually in a position where we budget for health insurance on a school year basis when it's actually realized and accrued on a calendar year basis. So sometimes we underestimate, sometimes we overestimate. This time we anticipate it an increase in mm -hmm. 2023, and it was actually a decrease. So some of the health insurance monies are being used in other places. I remember that you mentioned mm -hmm. that, and it still amazes me. I mean, that there was a decrease. Yep. It was not anticipated, that's for sure, but we'll take it. <clears throat> okay. It is on recommendation from the superintendent of schools that the Board of Education approve the April 2023 Treasurer's Report. A motion from Kelly and a second from Xavier. All in favor? That's everyone. It is upon recommendation from the superintendent of schools that the Board of Education approve the attached warrants, which were certified for payment on May 10th, 2023 and May 24th, 2023. A motion from Teresa and a second from Bill. All in favor? That is everyone. Thank you. That brings us to board member communications and announcements. Do you all mind if I do a couple things first? Okay. Uh, first business, um, just wanted to update the public on where we are on our superintendent search. Uh, we have now have a slate of candidates, which we will, we the board will be meeting with um, this week and next week for our first and second round <coughs> interviews. Um, can't really say too much about the slate. Uh, you'll all get a full report after. Um, we are gonna interview them, keeping in mind the search firm's compilation of all of the comments that they got from the public, from the different units and the forums that many, many people participated in. They created a uh, profile from all of that input and that is one of the instruments that we are using in our evaluation. And, and thank you to the community for that because it was very insightful. People took a lot of time to do that. And it's something that we will definitely use when we do our search. And I'll, I will add that our search firm district-wise put in a lot of effort to find this slate of candidates for us. Um, and the um, amount of information that they've given us to look over has been overwhelming. <laughs> 
Um, good thing we all love to read. And um, so we're working hard on it. We just wanted you all to know that. Okay. Um, <clears throat> the second thing I wanted to say is to Dr. Acker. Um, can you sit back because I can't see her? Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> um, Kathy came to us in 2015. We've known each other pretty much that whole time, I think, um, in my different roles in the PTA and on the board. Um, I think we had a lot of interaction and I really enjoyed so much working with you all of these years. Um, the way that you transitioned from your prior life as a principal into this new crazy role that you got convinced to take um, <laughs> uh, was, is really, really astonishing. It, you, you just picked it, picked it up and, and haven't stopped running since. Um, I, I asked a couple people uh, what maybe I should say, and one of the things uh, was definitely in all of our different roles that you have a way of explaining um, what we need to know in a way that we can actually understand it, which is very much appreciated. Um, the way that you have worked with the contractors, the, with George, with this one. <laughs> um, it really shows your versatility and your ability to just grasp new ideas and have your own great new ideas and we just don't know how we're gonna manage. But we know we can because we know you're only a phone call away. So um, we, the board just wanted to give you a little token tonight. Thank you. I almost made it through without crying. <laughs> I just want to say it's been an honor and a privilege to be a part of this district. And thank you for the opportunities that were given me. Um, thank you, Jim, for introducing me to Huntington and having the, the faith in me, you know, that I could do the transition that Christine alluded to. And it's been great working with all the administrators, the board, um, the staff. And I did get to see students still when I did classroom observations and that kept my heart in the classroom. So that was, uh, that was really great. And just thank you everybody for the opportunity. You've all been phenomenal to work with. Okay, who else has things to add? <laughs> I'll jump in. Okay. So I had the pleasure of attending two um, concerts, you know, and in the spirit of bittersweet, uh, I got to see how teachers really love to teach, right? They presented the seniors with their um, accomplishments for the four years that they had been with them. And, and you can really feel the passion of some of these teachers, right? The, the passion of the teachers, the passion of, of the students. Um, it, it was a wonderful thing. I, I could just see people welling up around me. Uh, I, that's, that's, what you, that's what I felt that day. So um, I just wanna say that that was a wonderful moment. Really nice to see that. Um, I will give you the update for mock trial. Uh, season's over. Uh, we went upstate to Albany. Our first competition was against the team that was the state champion from the previous year. So as soon as we knew that that's who we were matched up against, the team was very excited for revenge. <laughs> and, and they got their revenge. They, they beat that, the state champions. Um, we went up against another team that we probably could have done a little bit better against, and we ended up third in the state. Uh, number one public school. It was a fantastic run, a great year. We really have made a name for Huntington in the mock trial world statewide, and we're gonna to continue to do it. Great. Well, I have a few more things, but you want me to go? Okay. Um, 
I wanted to mention that I had the pleasure of attending the cabaret night um, <clears throat> last Friday. It was um, not in its usual venue, but it still was a lot of fun. Uh, the kids, you could just see how much they really care about each other and how much they love music. And that was um, amazing. Some of the kids that were there had never sung by themselves standing at a mic in front of a room full of people. And um, it's a great accomplishment and they were amazing. So I wanted to congratulate them. I wanted to congratulate our drama club who is sitting right now in the high school auditorium waiting to hear who are the recipients of any Hunt and Tonys. Um, always a fun and fabulous fancy night. Um, and I also was at the concerts. They were, they were amazing as always. And I wanted to um, remind everybody or tell you for the first time if you haven't seen any of the PTA postings on Facebook that the board, not really the board as an action, I'm sorry. The individual trustees are hosting a um, reception for Jim on June 20th in um, the rotunda. courtyard, not in the rotunda. It oh, says courtyard. the rotunda, but it's actually in the courtyard. Unless it rains, then it'll be in the rotunda. Just some cookies and coffee and cake um, between five and seven. If anybody in the community wants to come by and wish him well and tell them how much they appreciate his years here. Yep. Okay. Is that every, everybody? Did anybody think of anything? Okay. And it's to you. Okay. A couple of things. Uh, first of all, it, we have not met since the May 16th budget vote, correct? Oh, I forgot to say uh, that. Well, I meant to say know, that might, first. Might as well throw it in there. It is somewhat significant. <laughs> I'd like to thank the, Please. the community for an overwhelmingly positive experience. Um, the budget passed by over 86% and the capital proposition passed by even more than that, which uh, hopefully represents a degree of confidence that the community has in us to do what we need to do in support of, of them, in support of our students, and in support of our staff and, and school community. So thank you once again. And around that time, we also received our Moody's um, annual financial report, and we remain as rated as highly as a school district can be rated primarily because we have, and we, we talk about this all the time during the budget cycle and during any time we mention finances, this district has essentially no debt whatsoever. Uh, part of it is thanks to a lot of our capital work, Mr. George Austin being done in-house, managing our capital work via reserve funds, five-year capital plan. This is not just something that we do each year. It's something that we do over a multi-year period, and it makes a tremendous difference. So we get done what we need to get done without doing something like floating a bond. Uh, we have one 2006 bond issue left on the books that will expire, I think, in the interest and principal, thank you very much, uh, will be completely paid off in 2024-25. And at that time, the district, other than tax anticipation notes, will have no debt whatsoever, which is quite impressive. Um, so thank you to the board for their support of the way we have done things here, and it, 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 it definitely has paid off. Uh, one of the final endeavors, and I don't know if I should be mentioning this right now because we're still in the process of doing this, but Kathy has been feverishly working to look at our CEP numbers, there still may be something we can do uh, with respect to the percentages that the thresholds that we're required to meet. Uh, it's possible, not definite, but it's possible we may be able to take on universal free meals in this district if we can reach that threshold. It's, it's certainly far from guaranteed at this point, but she is working. continuing to work to see if it is possible to use something in the calculation. And the state may come back and say, no, you can't do that, uh, but no stone, le no stone left unturned. So. Thank you. She's gonna. I'm gonna. You know. She's gonna keep herself, and we're gonna keep each other working <laughs> until the very last minute. So thank you for that. Can I interrupt you for one minute? Sure. I just since you mentioned the budget, and I forgot that this was our first meeting. I just wanted to congratulate our um, trustees who did win re-election. So congratulations. Um, and yeah, I, I'm sorry that I didn't recall no, that. I'm so focused okay. on the money. That <laughs> these guys are old hat to me. So, so thank you. Uh, other state initiatives, I can tell you right now, um, we had a, a wonderful, each year something I look forward to is the Suffolk County School Superintendents Association Valedictorian Luncheon. 
uh, Laurel Bond and her family attended with Mr. Cusack and myself. Uh, it was extra special for me as president of the association this year. Uh, we have a number of scholarship winners. Scholarship money is being given to other Huntington students, and our orchestra, our chamber orchestras, played at the at the affair. And we were, you know, party central, right in the middle of the room. And it was just, it was a great experience. Um, and, and thank you, to Mr. Hoops, for writing up a nice article today on that. But uh, among the things that we brought into the ceremony is Miss Angelique Johnson Dingle, the former Western Suffolk BOCES district superintendent, was the keynote. And she actually spoke and had to leave because she was in the process of um, joining a meeting on APPR. And that seems to be the hot topic at the state level. My educators in the room know what that's all about. We have been advocating for bringing teacher and principal evaluations back to the local level in its entirety. And there, right now there are discussions taking place between legislators which is where the law resides. It's not an education department thing. 3012D is a law. It is not something that the state education department has control of. However, the state education department does develop regulations that address how that law is implemented. So before they can do what they do, uh, the legislators have to make a determination as to how this will continue. But I do anticipate that there will be changes. Um, we know what we know. Uh, this is, I'd like to think this is a district where Teacher evaluations are ongoing, they're collegial, they're productive, they're, they're as comfortable as they can be. Um, it's not a gotcha process, and we're, we're looking to use the process to improve instruction, to improve student learning. I, I look at myself as improving every day because I set foot in the classrooms of these professionals that, that are here with us today, many of whom are retiring. We'll uh, honor them again very soon uh, this evening, but there, there are so many great teachers, and I should have mentioned this this evening that our evaluation process allows us to learn as much from them as they can learn from us. That's what we're looking for statewide. So more to follow. And certainly, I, th I think you will hear about additional changes in this respect before the, uh, before the middle of next year at, uh, at, the, very, at the very latest. Um, great experience for high school seniors. Decisions day, thank, uh, decision day, thank you to uh, Mrs. Alamia, who is feverishly coordinating new events at the guidance level throughout the district, but I'll mention a couple of those. Decision day gave us a, a, a chance to put all the kids in the bleachers. Um, they had to get up, and they did, <laughs> wearing their college garb. They, they filled the bulk of the bleachers, displaying where they'll, be, where, where they'll be attending college and university next year. So thank you for coordinating that, Jeanette. Uh, also on budget day, a shout out to Mrs. Salato and all of the art, uh, uh, fine, fine art teachers throughout the district. That was about as great an really art was. show as any district can put on at the K through 12 level. Um, coincides with our budget vote each, each year, but this was truly representative of the creativity and the work of students from across this district. Not just those kids who are taking 15 art courses, but kids who are just general, I like to draw, their stuff was up too. And you know what? They should be very proud. We'll leave it at that. Xavier mentioned the concerts. Shout out to our filmmakers. Uh, Mrs. Swan's group put on their annual film festival at the Cinema Arts Center on the 22nd, a couple of weeks back. It was, as always, terrific. Thank you to Brendan, uh, to Beth, and those who contributed to the wellness fair. It wasn't as well attended as we would have liked, but it's something we can grow from moving forward. Another one of uh, the events that Jeanette put together, a very important event, and I know she's going to do it earlier next year, the college essay writing um, event that she, um, we, we squeezed in on the 31st. We all know that SAT, ACT are not as high in demand as admissions criteria in our colleges and universities across the, uh, across the country, even the high-end ones. The college essay then becomes that much more important. So Jeanette is, is being as proactive as possible with her folks. And thank you to her and the guidance counselors for putting together a great workshop. I think we had somebody from Penn State and SUNY Oswego. And we look to do more of that moving forward. And tonight was not mentioned, but uh, there was an audit committee meeting. And I could not get to the audit committee meeting because I got a chance to walk the red carpet at Huntington High School <laughs> for the second consecutive year, the Hunting Tonys, the town-wide theater award program was held at Huntington High School. So if you happen to drive by Huntington High School and saw um, <laughs> beautiful children in gowns and tuxes and all kinds of creative clothing, uh, they were there from all eight Huntington districts to be recognized tonight for being nominated. And some, I don't know if we've heard anything at this point, but some of them will come out winners in their respective categories. So thank you to the town for uh, partnering with us. And thank you to all of the, the brilliant theater students from across the township of Huntington. We have one award so far. What do we got? Uh, best stage crew in a play. Okay. <laughs> All right. And 
and that's awesome. All these kids are really, honestly, theater in Huntington, it, it's so incredible that in every school district, it really is hard to one up the next. Um, we put what we're show, I'm trying to remember our show, Susical and Almost, uh, Maine. Uh, Almost Maine. Almost Maine, thank you. Uh, so it's not just actor, actors, just like, just like the Tonys. They're recognizing stage crew, they're recognizing musical score, they're recognizing pit orchestra, and I know, you know, our, our kids here are literally, um, they're, they're phenomenal, but uh, we're proud to host that event, leave it at that. More to follow, uh, summer reading postings are, are up and, and running at this point, so we're now preparing for all of the phenomenal end of year events and, and preparing for uh, providing as, as much brain stimulation over the summer as possible with our summer STEM program, our summer, summer arts program, our booster club camps, and all of the, the, the little things that we'll make available to students to tap into over the summer. Uh, knock on wood, it's been, a, it's been a terrific school year. So I will leave it at that. Great. Thank you. That brings us to our first public commentary. Um, the usual rules apply. So we have two items for discussion and action tonight, our district retirees and our computer science and digital fluency. Um, if you want to speak on those topics, we would give you first chance. If you want to speak on another topic, as long as it's not personnel or naming any individual students or employees, please come to the mic and identify your affiliation with the community. Okay. Okay, there is another opportunity at the end. That brings us to our first item, which is our district retirees. So for those who weren't with us, um, what time is it? It is Half hour ago, an hour ago. An hour ago. Uh, one of my favorite and most bittersweet things to, to be involved in, and we haven't done it in this manner in a while, primarily because of the uh, pandemic, which seems like it was 100 years ago at this point, thank goodness, um, is recognize uh, some people who have put forth tremendous, tremendous effort and care and support and passion for our students and our school district community. So we did recognize them at the uh, retirement recognition event in the rotunda an hour, hour and a half ago, but we would like to call them up individually right now so we can share with them a, a couple of tokens of our gratitude, wish them well, and remind them that they are, they, they are and will always be members of the Huntington School District family. So as I call your name, I'm going to ask that you come up. Uh, Christine and I don't know, Xavier, you want to, want to help with the plaque and, and the flower? And just stay up here so Mr. Hoops can take a photo with your, with your garb in hand. So let us begin with, I'm going to go in alphabetical order here truly this time, Dr. Kathleen Acker. And, and, and if your name started with a Z, you'd be complaining too. So like, that's, that's not... Uh, Mr. George, George Austin. His friend Ken Jem. Yeah, I think we'll do a group photo so they can they can they can they can, can kind of stay off to the side. Then they'll come up up front. I'm sorry, Miss Fran Can Jemmy. Well, for those who don't know, Kathy is the assistant superintendent for finance and management services. George is the lead operations manager. He's the head of our, our facilities department. Fran is a senior office assistant at Huntington High School. And again, these people have, have made a true difference here. So we, we spoke about them not too long ago, but I do not want any just name recognition here to overlook the fine work and the efforts that they've put in. Uh, Washington teacher, Susie Deinhardt. Woodhall teacher, Paul Esposito. Finley math teacher, Betsy Groby. Finley special education teacher, Mary Beth Stahl. District custodian, Paul Vassallo. Southdown teacher, Lauren Wisnowski. <laughs> Finley office assistant, Janet Winship. And last but certainly not least, high school special education teacher, Maureen Yospiel.
And I'll briefly mention those who could not be with us this evening. Uh, Joe Cassidy, Flower Hill head custodian. Lorraine Costello, high school art teacher. Tom Calderaro, custodian at Southdown. Linda Chicado, senior office assistant at Flower Hill. Lynn Corsetti Hendricks, high school math teacher. Doreen Caravallis, Southdown reading teacher. Janet Lentini, payroll senior account clerk. Joanne Torres, Washington teacher. Steve Muller, high school security guard. Donna Maria O'Shaughnessy, Flower Hill reading teacher, and Kim Voyages, Flower Hill teaching assistant. So please join me in congratulating and thanking the people here this evening and those who could not join us. <laughs> Whichever spouse said that, I would get a head start. <laughs> Shall I begin? Oh, okay. Okay, well, at this okay. point, we're going to continue with, you know, this is a presentation, but really an update on our computer science and digital fluency standards, and I will start by just reminding and letting those here tonight know that we have really taken a lead role across not only Suffolk County, but Long Island and New York State in this respect, so I'm gonna ask Beth to start us off. Good evening. HUFSD has been working diligently to ensure that we are providing all students with opportunities in the area of computer science and digital fluency. When the computer science and digital fluency standards and implementation timeline were released by the New York State Department of Education, we continued the work that was already in place and began planning for the expansion of our computer science programs to not only meet the implementation requirements and timeline, but to ensure that all students had an opportunity to access and excel in this area in grades K through 12. Tonight, Ms. Robinette and Dr. Grassani will provide you with an update on the work that has been completed in grades K through six, accompanied by a peek into the scope and sequence that was created by our teachers over the past two years as they learned and collaborated with others through our participation in the Smart Start grant. We will also provide you with an overview of the computer science courses in grades seven through 12 that will give all students an opportunity to learn and explore about this ever expanding field of study. It's my pleasure to present Ms. Robinette and Dr. Grassani. Good evening, Board of Education and, and District Office. Thank you for having us or inviting us this evening. We're very excited to be here. Is this too loud? You're fine. No, you're good. good? I'm good? I sound so loud. <laughs> so we're really excited here because we've been working really hard for the, about a year and a half, two years, um, on really rolling out this New York State initiative. And um, it's been a lot of work, but I have to thank the teachers and all the staff of Huntington School District for really pulling together and really developing the plan that we're about to share with you. So a, a little perspective, um, and I know I spoke the last time I was here, but you know, computer science is 
fun is needed by all students, and there are some reasons for it. Um, students perform better in other subject areas by studying computer science. They excel in problem solving, and they are more likely to attend college. This is an interesting statistic. The STEM problem is in computer science. 67% of all new jobs in STEM are in computing. And 10% of the STEM graduates are actually in computer science. I just kind of want to elaborate on that a little bit. About only 50% of, of high schools in New York State actually offer computer science program. I didn't put that up there, but it's, it's a stagger, staggering statistic that really does um, explain the statistic that I'm sharing with you right now. And as you can see, this was the implementation timeline. And we're just about the end of our capacity building. But I'm really excited to share with you that we are way ahead of this curve. Um, we will be, and I'll get to the impl our implementation plan in just a few minutes, but we are definitely leading the, w the way, not only on Long Island, but in New York State as well. There are five key concepts um, in the New York State Digital Fluency and Learning Standards. Impacts of computing, computational thinking, networks and system design, cybersecurity, and digital literacy. And not to go off too long on this, but they, the state rolled out um, bands K1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9 through 12. And the do those are the documents. And within those documents are standards. And we spent, I, I would say, a good portion of this year actually dissecting those standards and breaking them down by grade level. So we went from a two or three grade band, and we developed, and we, we kind of put the standards by grade level. And we'll be sharing those documents with you in just a few minutes. My turn. My turn, everyone. Hi, welcome. And uh, what we've been doing is uh, we've been working with Western Suffolk BOCES um, through the Smart Start grant. It's a five-year grant, and they hired a computer company called Mouse. And they have been working with uh, our administrative staff, other districts, and teachers each year. So we've been two years into our five-year grant. 12 teachers have been trained each year and we will be continuing that in the following years. So the way we intend for the computer science standards to be taught is during our library media period in the primary buildings, and they also, the library media specialist, has a period where they push into the homeroom classes, and they will be using those two periods a week to deliver some of these standards. And that's K-3 to and also at Woodhull. STEM is a little bit different, so they have their library media period, and they will do a, be doing a second period in the innovation lab. So that's where we plan for these standards to be rolled out. But having talked to the teachers that we've been working with, there are also many of these are just um, standards that will be part of their everyday curriculum. So it won't just be in these library media periods and these technology periods, but it'll be throughout the course of the day. So what we did when we worked with uh, Mouse is that the first year that we worked with them, Teresa and I gave the teachers and Mouse a Excel spreadsheet with all of the standards by grade level. Then we asked the teachers to brainstorm. What could they be doing to address these topics? What have they already been doing? What could they do? What resources do we have? So they, the first year, the first 12 teachers filled out these big spreadsheets and said, oh, you know, we can touch on this in ELA, and we can do this in math, and, you know, and they really talked about what specific topics that they could do. And it, it worked out really well. So they had this big giant list. And then this year, we asked Mouse if they would really help us narrow down a more um, direct scope and sequence. Could they tell us you know, what should be done in the beginning of the year, what should be done in the second part of the year, 
mid-year and end of the year. So they helped develop a template for us to use so that all the grade levels look similarly. And they said, these are the computer science standards that should be taught first. And these should be taught, you know, middle of the year, and so on. So I don't know, if I, I don't. Can you click on um, one of the uh, links, Jim? So just pick one. Anyone? Yeah. Yep. So when you click on first grade, the first thing that you see is our table of contents, and you can see September one. They, they're talking about private versus public spaces, and in November. Uh, they're talking about inputs and outputs and parts of a computer, and it goes on like this. So they have lessons that are um, developed that go out throughout the year. That way we make sure that all of our teachers hit all of the standards, you know, that our students, when they go through K to 6, they're going to hit all the standards that they're required to teach. Can you scroll down one more? Mm -hmm. So then we get into the nitty gritty, and you can see that these are a suggested lesson and it goes into links that they can watch and what the, um, so the computer science standards are, and everything will be there in a nutshell. And this will be distributed to our teachers starting next year. And each grade level looks this, you know, similar. It's broken out in the same way, and you know, so you can look at fifth grade, and you can see that in first kindergarten and first grade, there were two lessons um, a month. In some of our upper grades, it might go up to three lessons a month. But you can see it's not overly demanding, but it's broken out, like what should they know first and what should they do later in the year. All right. We can go back to there. We go. All right, so this is a, an example of um, a grade one lesson. And I'm just going to talk about it a little bit. Um, so the first thing that they're going to see, and I don't want to play this for you um, because I'm not sure how our links will work, but we have a, a cute video um, with a song about what's the, what are the, um, how to be safe online. And it's a very cute, catchy little tune, and they talk about, you know, make sure you don't give away your personal information, and, and it's something very catchy. The next link is a story that will be read aloud to kids, and it's also a YouTube link, and it talks about how um, students, they, uh, a child is uh, being taught about the lock for their front door and, and how you know the key to the front door keeps us safe and that you can't copy your key. You know, if you copy your key, then whoever has a copy of that key can be let inside. And then it goes on to talk about how that's very similar to passwords, because this is first grade. And so how the passwords keep you, you know, how a lock keeps you safe at home, a password keeps you safe online. So it talks about that. And then if you go to click on the picture of meat guts. So this is one of the links that the teachers can use. And they, well, go, go down to the fifth slide. So you know, how do they feel? What is the internet? How, what does caution mean? And go down to number six. And then this video is a little bit of what a first grader might see during this lesson. It's a one minute video, so we can play this. On this episode, it's Guts. Hello, digital citizens. My name is Guts. I'm known for listening to my trusty gut to stay safe, in person and online. Today, I'm at my bus stop waiting to head to school. I got to walk here with my best friend. It's important to be safe when leaving my house, so I always follow these three rules. I ask for permission first, I only talk to people I know, and I stick to streets I know. Going on the internet is kind of like going to the bus stop. I still need to be safe, so I ask for permission from my grown-ups, I only talk to people I know, and I stick to websites and apps I know. My parents always tell me to trust my gut. If something doesn't feel safe, I should step away and ask for help. I hope you remember to trust your gut to stay safe online. Hey, Guts, the bus is arriving. Gotta go. But my question for you digital citizens out there is, how do you stay safe online?
so that's a little bit about you know how they would introduce this topic and then they have a Gus handout which we don't really need to click on but they get to color a picture of guts and they then also get to write down how would they stay safe online what do what would be a safe password and they get to go on further so that's a typical first grade lesson now if we can go to the I hope I can do that myself mm -hmm. go to the next slide so a fourth grade lesson is a little bit more um, in depth. Uh, it's talking about how to really make a strong password. Because now fourth graders, you know, they're they're typing in their own passwords. They're not using a badge to log into Clever. They're you know typing a password. So um, if you click Mr. Polanski on powerful passwords, this is the left lesson. So all of this information is shared with teachers, and this is from Code.org, and it talks about you know, how to create a lesson for fourth graders around this password. So they compare passwords again to a lock. They define, you know, what is a password? What does it mean to um, protect your information? And what they give the students is a worksheet. And the worksheet um, has a bunch of questions like, um, do you think, and they have to write do or don't. So the kids would work in a group. Um, three or four kids at a table, and they would just read these statements. And if you scroll down where it says powerful passwords, make a copy um, on the right side. No, what? Well, yeah, that's fine. You can open it up. Which? Either one. The PDF is fine. And then it came up on the bottom. Oh, that's not the right one. Sorry. Wrong one. <laughs> the uh, for the students. Sorry, the one that's below that. Make, there you go. So they have to write do or don't. So do or don't. Should you make your passwords eight or more characters? And they really have to discuss this with each other. It's, these are not the right answers. The wrong answers. These is the kids without instruction fill in what they think is a good idea is the right answer for this. You know, should they use dictionary words as a password? Should they include numbers, symbols, and letters? So they, they go through this, and then there'll be a classroom discussion on it. So after they finish filling that out, the teacher will go over it, they'll have a discussion, they'll share the right answers to these questions. And so they'll learn a little bit more about it. And then they have the students, um, they get pass out, pieces of post-its or index cards for to each student, and they ask them, think of your, fa your pet or a character's name, your favorite number, um, a symbol, and your favorite food. And then after they've written these down, they rearrange those on their desktop to make that into a password. So that's a, you know, hands-on, how can we create a password which not using, you know, one, two, three, four, five, or my nickname is Tootsie, and, you know, everybody should use, you know, would, would have that be a, a password. Um, and then there's a great little game that they can play afterwards, which is to test how strong their password is, and they follow a bunch of prompts. They all line up, and they say, the teacher will say, if you've changed your password in the last six months, take three steps forward. If your password is less than eight characters, take two steps back. If you use, you know, letters, symbols, and numbers in your password, take, you know, three steps or four steps forward. So it's a fun little game to really get the kids thinking about what makes a strong password, and they can see where they are at the end of the, uh, the lesson. And then the teachers will wrap it up, and they'll, you know, what makes a strong password, and so on, just the way a teacher would for any lesson. So that's a first grade lesson and then a fourth grade lesson. Okay. And then we have Miss Dr. All righty, so now we're gonna move on to secondary, our program at the secondary level in computer science. Um, we have done a lot of work at the middle level. I believe that's where we started last summer. We revised our Computer Science 7 curriculum, our Tech 7, as well as our Tech 8. All three address those five key concepts that I spoke about earlier. Um, and we've been, you know, enhancing it along the way. For example, we added Code Monkey this year in our Tech 7, which seems to be a big hit. It's a coding um, 
uh, resource for our technology teachers and the kids really seem to love it. Um, and so the middle level is really on its way. We worked this year in particular, we, at the beginning of the school year, we really started to focus in nine through 12. And we have been offering computer science essentials um, at, the, at the high school in, in grades nine through 12. Um, with long and long, hard discussions with teachers, administrators, we now will be offering computer science essentials for all students, nine through 12, um, beginning with the, uh, this, year's, this coming school year's cohort. Half of the ninth graders will be taking that computer science essentials class, and then the following year, that same cohort will be taking it as 10th graders. And as I said to you before, we really are on the forefront in the state. And because of that, uh, we were able to partner with Siena College. Um, they probably are the number one school in the state right now that is preparing students for this computer science certification. And through our discussions with them, we will be offering, um, we will be following their curriculum for computer science essentials, which addresses the high school standards as well as our AP Computer Science Principles class, which will be starting in September. And not only will we be offering it for AP credit, but also for, also for college credit. So we're super excited about that. Um, but as you can see, the prerequisites for um, AP Computer Science A will be AP Computer Science Principles. Um, at, in ninth grade, uh, we expect most of our ninth graders or 10th graders to take computer science essentials, but if they really do have a strong background and we, they could go right into AP computer science principles as a ninth grader and earn that AP credit. So there's a lot of wiggle room here, um, but we're prepared and we're so prepared that we are also thinking about and planning to offer cybersecurity, which is huge right now in, in, in our global society that we are expecting to probably start to offer that in 25, 26. That's another course. We want to keep building and expanding this pathway for our students because we really do know that that's where we need to go and prepare our students for the future. Let me see. Go on the green. Yeah. So here is a document um, that, I, that I put together and it kind of gives you an overview of each of the courses. But as you can see, technology seven. So in seventh grade, they're getting a half year and a quarter year of computer science. And between the tech seven and the computer science, we're pretty much hitting four of those five key ideas where the hardware is really going to be done in tech eight, which is traditionally what's been done in tech eight. But as you can see, um, we we kind of divided it up, and uh, in Tech 7, we're talking about electronic uh, circuits, 3D printing and design, coding, which I mentioned to you before, VEX robotics, um, and really creating apps. And this is exactly where, and we, we actually worked on this last summer. Um, and then in the quarter course, the Computer Science 7, we're, again, we're talking and, and some of it is repetitive, we, we, is, we've done it in both courses, but we're to, more talking about impacts of computing on society, digital citizenship, citizenship, citizenship and cybersecurity. Now, if we move, yeah, just keep going, go into essential, uh, essentials. Yeah, there you go, there you go, okay. So computer science essentials um, now will be, we will be partnering with Siena College. It won't be for a college credit because this is a high school course, not a college course, but we, our computer science teachers will be working with not only the staff, but with teachers all over the state that are partnering with Siena College to really implement this curriculum. And again, it addresses those five key ideas. Okay, now we're gonna move on to AP Computer Science Principles, which this is an extension of that essentials class. So it really takes it up a notch. It's really the creative side of computer science. Um, and it allows 
for more of an artistic view of computer science. It's not just strictly programming, which is our traditional course, which is our AP Computer Science A, which really focuses on Java, where principals will focus more, we'll get into Python coding, and we'll be doing the Python coding as well as essentials. So it's really learning more computer languages, which are constantly changing in, in the world right now. And there it is, proposed, I'm excited about this, 25-26, uh, uh, about really offering kids an opportunity, a whole course on cybersecurity, which we could also partner with Sienna on that as well. That's it. Let me go back. I love this quote. Um, it's from someone that I really admire as an innovator in education right now. Technology will never replace great teachers, but technology in the hands of great teachers is transformational. Thank you so much tonight. I just want to thank Dr. Grassani and Mary Beth Robinette and all of the teachers that have participated in the Smart Start grant for the last two years. The first year was pretty rough uh, with the company that was hired. We really didn't feel that we were getting what we needed from that group. So we gave the feedback to BOCES and to the company and said, what we want at the end of this is a scope and sequence so our teachers have a clear direction as to what's going to be taught K through eight. We already had our courses nine through 12 and they really changed the whole program based on our feedback. It's good that we're not shy in this uh, district. Uh, they really changed the scope of work this year, the way we were supported this year, and it really has been such an amazing pr product that we've created in just two years that next year we'll be providing professional development so the teachers can really understand the standards and roll them out with full implementation K-12. to So we, I know a lot of times we present to the board the courses that are being approved at the secondary level, but we wanted an opportunity to share the foundation that we're also providing K-6 to in this important field. So thank you for your support, and thank you to both of you for presenting tonight. Thank you. Thank you, all three of you, for your leadership, and especially for what you just mentioned about making sure that the teachers are um, have all of the tools that they need and all of the training that they need to make this successful for the kids. I just also wanted to add my thanks. I um, I do recall, and it's something that I love about this district is, you know, just paying attention. A lot of districts check a lot of boxes, and I feel like Huntington always goes above and beyond, um, particularly in, in curriculum and really in everything. Um, but what I loved, I was talking to Dr. Grissoni and Ms. Robinette before, I had an opportunity to kind of really dig into the, the bones of this, and it seems like it gives the opportunity for teachers to really, if they don't have a full 60 minutes, um, it gives them the flexibility to really still deliver comprehensive standards. Um, and so I just thank you. I know this, this was a tremendous amount of work and I'm really excited about it because we really are ahead of the curve. So thanks so much. Thank you for all of your support. <laughs> and I'll mention that they are hot commodities. They have presented at LAASCD. They are <laughs> constantly, the phone is constantly ringing from other districts in terms of, of how we got to where we've gotten and what types of things we're looking to in the future because districts are using, they're looking to us as a standard, as, as a model, as, as a leader in the implementation well, of these We'll standards. have to get you guys an agent. <laughs> <laughs> Take it on the road. Yeah. Well, that sounds us. Right back to you. <laughs> it is upon recommendation from the superintendent of schools that the Board of Education approve CSE, CPSC submissions as delineated. A motion from Teresa and a second from Michelle. All in favor? It is upon recommendation from the superintendent of schools that the Board of Education approve a new course titled Contemporary Music, Jazz, Hip Hop, Rap, and More for initial implementation in the 20 in the 2024-2025 school year. A motion from Teresa and a second from Tom. I would like to just start with saying that just finding the title for this course <laughs> took more conversations than anyone at this table could imagine. Uh, but we did settle on this title. Thank you, Mr. Salato. Lots of patience here. Uh, 
One of the goals of the music department is to increase participation for students from a broad variety of backgrounds and with varied levels of prior knowledge and musical experience. This course will be of interest to a wide range of learners and will allow students to participate in the high school music program with no prerequisite or participation in instrumental or vocal ensemble courses. The study of the history of music will allow students to explore the aesthetics and creativity of a period in history, connect to other content areas and discipline, and increase their overall cognitive ability and academic achievement. This course will examine contemporary music beginning in or around the 1920s. It will focus on the influence of jazz on hip hop and rap and take a close look at various musical genres. It will allow students to discuss and explore influential artists, composers, and musicians and their impact on music history, culture, and politics. We are really looking forward to this course and we think it will be a huge draw for students that have not been participating in our music program perhaps uh, in the past. Questions? Uh, yeah, I just have one statement. That is, uh, as a guy who came here most interested in the nerdy proposal here, <laughs> I will say having attended a liberal arts college, one of the most enlightening courses I took was a history of jazz course. And I will tell you to this day, I still recall, remember elements of it. So I credit you. I think that uh, it, it's, it's very good. Um, and it's a nice cultural addition that does weave its way into a lot of the different arts and to expose our kids to that is wonderful. So thank you all. Thank you. Absolutely. Will it satisfy a requirement for graduation or is it just an elective? It, it'll be an elective. Okay. Okay. Any other questions? All in favor? Thank you. That's everyone. It is upon recommendation from the superintendent of schools that the Board of Education approve a new course in anthropology for initial implementation in the 2024-2025 school year. A motion from Kelly and a second from Teresa. This new elective will expand learning opportunities in the field of anthropology and offer opportunities for a deeper understanding of the human condition. Anthropology is an important social science that promotes exploration of the commonalities and differences that exist among all people. Among the course goal is to guide students in identifying similarities and differences among various societal groups, as well as in developing an understanding of the distinctiveness of the human species and diversity and forms of social existence across the world and through time. This course will include units on physical anthropology, archaeology, linguistic anthropology, and cultural anthropology. Students will additionally be required to engage in and complete a culminating project, which may involve analysis and presentation of a specific society in the context of several units. Questions? <laughs> Joe, you look like you something. No? Really? I thought you had something to say. Okay, then. All in favor? We touched on every area possible tonight. So yeah, I'm sure very did. comfortable. All of our directors, like Diana that. Rich is here. We did some special <laughs> education, some music, some STEM, some social studies. Thank you. Little elementary, too. Little elementary. <laughs> Mr. Hinder. All right. It is upon recommendation from the superintendent of schools that the Board of Education approve personnel items on schedules two, three, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, thirteen, fifteen, sixteen, nineteen, and twenty-two. A motion, please. From Michelle and a second from Tom. All in favor? That's everyone. Do we have announcements? We have quite a few. So our goal, obviously, this time of year is, is to get started on the hiring process because some, some of the areas are, it's a supply and demand thing and the sooner we can get out there and bring our screenings together, get our committees together, get the process in motion, uh, the better. So we're proud to um, welcome a number of new staff members starting in 23-24. It's a very busy time of year so uh, the majority could not be here with us this evening but I do want to acknowledge them regardless. So joining us in the middle school guidance department, uh, Ms. Lasani Batista. So welcome, Lasani. Hopefully they're watching. Not new to the district, but assuming an elementary position for the first time. Uh, actually, not the first time. I think she was in a lead replacement position as well, but Jessica Bermudez Romero. Jessica has been with us. New to the special education department. Um, 
succeeding, not replacing, but succeeding <laughs> uh, Maureen Yospiel, who we honored earlier this evening, Kelly Egan. Uh, also new, a new position in the special education department. We're proud to welcome Malcolm Eugene. And in the area of world languages, he's going to work at both Finley and Woodhull. Uh, the name may sound familiar because he is a Huntington High School grad, uh, Mr. Lenny Joya Amaya. <laughs> Joining us also in the counseling department as one of our counselors takes uh, leave, Ms. Deandra Macias. She'll be with us from October through May 23-24. So welcome, Deandra. I'm going in order of schedule here. Uh, I will acknowledge one of, one of the things that I'm certainly going to make sure the board has this summer are my tenure recommendations. Uh, but there is a tenure appointment that will take effect on July 1. Uh, that appointment was acknowledged on this agenda. And he is actually in his security <laughs> pose right now. But uh, thank you for all he, th thank him for anything we need from this man we get. Uh, he is, um, it's a, it's a 24 seven thing for him, but Jared, uh, Jared Stein is now a tenure director of safety and security. And in the essence of succeeding, we welcome this evening, just have to find it here, here he is. Um, again, no replacing a gentleman who's been attached to our facilities for so long, uh, but we are very pleased to welcome this evening Mr. Alan Wakefield as our interim director of facilities. So welcome, Alan, I see him over there. terrific gentleman and he has got a wealth of experiences in a number of different districts. He has worked with our architect. He has worked with Park East who is the uh, contracted construction management RFP, construction management firm. Um, we are very confident and pleased to have Alan join us for as long as needed. So thank you once again, Alan. Welcome to Huntington. And I think, just taking a quick look, everything else is standard. And we are good. Thank you. Okay. You ready, Dr. Acker? It's my last one. All right. Okay. Don't mess it up. And I'm, oh, and I'm still going to read on my paper. <laughs> <laughs> Why change now? You should take exactly. it home and frame it. Taking it right out the door with me. It is upon recommendation from the superintendent of schools that the Board of Education approve items I through T on this evening's business agenda. Who would like to make the motion? Bill. And a second from Michelle. Any questions? All in favor? That is everyone. Thank you once again, Dr. Acker. Thank you. Xavier? We have some donations. Mm -hmm. An anonymous donor is presenting a donation of $100 to the Flower Hills Primary School. Thank you for that donation. <laughs> the Bender family is presenting a donation of $2,000 to credit the Kate Bender Memorial Scholarship Award within the Expendable Trust account. Thank you for that. <laughs> and finally, the Special Education Parent Teachers Association, SEPTA, is presenting a donation of $2,500. This donation will credit scholarship funds within the Expendable Trust account and will provide five $500 scholarship awards to graduating seniors. Thank you to SEPTA. <laughs> Also part of the business agenda tonight, I'm pleased to announce that uh, the board has just ratified an agreement between the district and the UPSEU district aid unit. Uh, certainly would have liked to have done this a, a little bit more rapidly, but I really, I don't know if she's still here tonight, but I'd really like to thank Kim Schaefer and the, is she in the back? I, I can't see even halfway up, so uh, Kim Schaefer, thank, thank you. you, thank you, thank you, thank you. So we move forward with uh, the AIDS monitors and assistants, and we are, we are hopeful that we can um, complete negotiations with a couple of units that started a while ago, and we are also beginning with two other units that I hope we can work relatively quickly during, during my tenure here. Um, but again, we hope that this message sent here demonstrates that we work together, uh, we value our people here. Our people are what make this district from, from top to bottom, from side to side, from adult to child. Uh, once again, I, I just want to thank Kim for 
of you know, we, we, we stepped into this together kind of late in, in, the, in the process here and um, it's relationships that make things work. So thank you once again. Thank you. That brings us to our final public commentary. I'm not going to go over all the rules again unless I see somebody stand up. <laughs> okay. Comments by board members? Oh. You, want to, you want to announce them all? Go ahead. Do you have them all? You, yeah. um, I'm very pleased to announce that Huntington has won Best Play for Almost Maine. And a special congratulations to Dylan Brin, who won for Best Lead Actor. And as I understand, we also won um, Best Technical Direction for a play as well as the aforementioned stage crew. So we took home a couple of Tonys. It's exciting. Yes. Is that all the ones that are on your list, Rick? That's, that's all I have. Okay. And, and again, all of these young people should be very proud of what they accomplished, win or be nominated. It's, mm -hmm. an, it's an honor. Uh, we're honored to host the event. And maybe we can work it out one of these years where it doesn't conflict with a board meeting where you can, can actually, actually enjoy go. it. <laughs> but thank you to the town for partnering with us and hosting. It used to be at the Angerman Theater. Um, we've hosted it here for the last two years. Okay. So we, it is upon recommendation from the superintendent of schools that the Board of Education enter into executive session to discuss the status of collective bargaining with several district units in according with the open meetings law and also probably a tiny bit of superintendent search. A motion from Jason, a second from Tom, all in favor? Thank you, thank you all for coming and congratulations to all the retirees and to Mr. Stein. <laughs>